If you enjoy this video, consider supporting us on Patreon for just $5 a month. Click on the card in the upper right hand corner for more information. How satisfying is that, eh? <laughs> hey guys, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media, and you may be wondering why I, or anyone for that matter, carry around an iPod, this one being a iPod Nano third generation from 2007 in 2020. We all carry around a smartphone that can play music all the time. Anything we want to listen to is available to us. But that's kind of the point that I want to get away from. To start things off, I want to tell you a story. Back when I was growing up, and I know this is going to age me a lot for the younger viewers and make me seem like a child to the older viewers, it was the mid-2000s and I distinctly remember sharing CDs of music uh, with friends of mine. One circumstance of which I remember is a friend of mine burning me copies of the entire Daft Punk discography that he bought you know, over the years and sharing it with me and a good friend of mine. And I remember burning you know, these mixtapes, I guess a carried over term from the previous generation on cassettes, making these tapes of music for their friends or what have you so you can share music around. I remember distinctly doing that on CDs as well. We would burn a CD and give it to our friends and we would um, you know, all listen to it in conjunction or what have you. And I remember that and iPods existed at this time but they didn't like break huge, uh, at least to my age demographic until I was in like later middle school, early high school. But then as iPods started to come around, it kind of nullified this need to burn a CD or something similar, uh, cassette or what have you, because now I can put my entire life or my entire like personality in music form on an MP3 player, bring it to school and then play the songs for my friends. And then they would go pick up the songs for themselves on iTunes or what have you. And I think this is a very like intentional way of looking at music, which I really miss now. It seems like I can save anything that I want on Spotify, toss it on my Spotify profile and have it in this endless sea of music that I will likely never see again. If I'm purchasing everything or at least downloading everything from some sort of source, it feels like I went through the effort to do so and I'm going to listen to this as it has value to me. It's not as you know, trivial as saving with one click on Spotify. It doesn't feel the same to me as buying a song on a CD, ripping it to my computer and importing it onto a device like this or downloading a song from iTunes and syncing it to my iPod. I think one of the big reasons is the lack of distraction. When I'm on my phone and I'm listening to a new album from an artist that I like, let's say I find the artist on Spotify, I put the album on, I play it, and then subconsciously my mind tells me to go on, you know, Google Chrome or go to Facebook or Instagram and start scrolling while listening. I don't know if you've ever experienced the same, but when I'm scrolling through Instagram and I have a song playing from an album in the background, I play a video on Instagram and it pauses the background music, which is what I was supposed to be focused on in the first place. And by having this like social life, I guess, in the digital world on the same device that my music is, it makes it so that I'm constantly distracted from my music and I'm focusing on, you know, the content that I'm seeing. And that's something that I'm not overly fond of in the streaming world. Hi, Juno. My cat. Oh. Hi, bud. When you bought an album on an iPod, it felt like you were buying a product that you could, you know, use for its lifespan and so you got, I guess, inevitably bored of it. But there was a certain value that it had to you because you bought this and you intentionally put it on this device or you intentionally burned it to a CD or you intentionally bought a CD. And that intentionality, yes, that is a word. And that intentional nature of physical media like CDs and cassettes, I think carries over a lot to an iPod because it is a physical device that you have a limited amount of space on. It's like you're burning a CD every time you sync it. I'm a pretty big music enthusiast, so I always prefer listening to a body of work over a single. That might age me a little bit to some newer viewers, but when an album is put out by an artist that I respect, I think that the album was designed 
to be listened to as a piece. It's a body of work. At least that's how I think of it when I'm writing an album of my own or a EP or what have you. So I want to respect that and I want to you know, listen to the album for what it is rather than listen to like the singles. And I think that having an iPod and a designated device for that means I can stick an album that I'm excited for on here. I won't be distracted by social media on my phone and I can pay 100% attention to the artist's ideas and what they meant to say with their music. Just like we used to do with CDs and cassettes and vinyl before that. Which is another thing that I'm really interested in. You can't see it, but I have a huge vinyl collection as well. And I think that there's something to be said about holding music in your hands even further than an iPod. But we'll get into that in another video. This is my first iPod. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. When I came to this realization like about a year ago, I really wanted to go back and use this just for the sheer nostalgia factor. My old iPod Shuffle, second generation, held a gigabyte of music and I loved it so much. I knew every th single song on this thing. I knew the playlist from start to finish. I knew how many clicks I had to do to get to the next song. You know, everything about this device, and it was like the love of my life at the time. And while I guess you can say the same thing about a phone as well, it's kind of a reflection of who you are, they're very like serialized, and I don't know that I feel the same way about this phone as I felt about this iPod when I was, you know, 11 or 12. When I, when I started this journey of trying to find a MP3 player or iPod or something to try to bring that tactility and intentional nature of music back into my life, I was originally going to use this guy. Found out it was dead. I think I might have washed it when I was a kid. I don't know. I put this thing through a lot. I ran it into the ocean one time because I had it in my pocket or clipped to my pants or something. I don't remember. I reached out on Facebook and Twitter and asked if anyone had an iPod they would sell me. One of my good friends, Meatport, a really, really funny guy, sent me this guy. He picked it up at a yard sale for the same reason that I wanted one, for that nostalgia factor and trying to get back into physical music. There's music on this guy from the first owner, the one he bought it from in a garage sale. And it's kind of, it's kind of nostalgic to me because I can see a small window into this person's life from the era. There's music on here, all kinds, like Fleetwood Mac, The Beatles, Frank Sinatra, Journey, incredible artists. But one of the coolest things I found on here was a voice recording from the original owner. I want to play that for you. This was recorded 6-23-2011 at 10 a.m. I'm not going to tell you her name because obvious reasons but um, it's kind of a blast to the past and it's a window into someone's life, which I think is what attracts me so much to MP3 players. Here we go. My name is and I am having a great time this summer and I love my husband and he's awesome. <laughs> Pretty short, but it reminds me of my time in 2011 and, and some of the experiences I had and I hope that it does that for you as well. One of the biggest reasons I bought this is so I can put my own music on it and so I can listen to my own music without distractions of social media while taking a walk around the town or what have you. I often like to listen to my music out of the context of my studio so that I can really dial in how it's going to sound uh, to a consumer who's listening elsewhere. I also like to hear my music with a visual aesthetic of, of somewhere that inspires me. Let's say I go to a mountain or like a, you know, a cool... Uh, industrial location that I can listen to the music in and, and get inspired by. But a lot of the times if I'm on my phone, I'm going to be on my phone, I'm going to be on Instagram and Facebook and stuff, and I think that this is going to help a lot with that. Well guys, I hope this video inspired you to go and dig your old iPod or iPods out of the drawer and mess around with them for yourself. I think there's something incredibly nostalgic to me at least about holding music in my hands and only having a device dedicated to the art that the musicians that I like create. It's something that I hold really nostalgic and I hope that some of these ideas can, you know, influence you a little bit into considering it. Burning a CD for your friend, making a mixtape for them on a cassette, or just carrying around an iPod with your identity and music just to share it with your friends. And above all else, guys, keep sharing music and art that you love. It's really important, especially in times like this. I'm Julian of Julian Gray Media, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye.
Thank you.